let's have a quick look at the news from Jay's farm. I've been developing a small, tiny little Unreal Engine project, and it's been uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I'm calling it. I think I'm calling it just game, so that in two weeks' time I can totally remember what I've done there. So it's a, it's a farming game, and I thought I'll show you the progress while this is loading. And Canada as well, Matthew, good to know. So in Canada, you're also going to change the time. That's nice that at least the, the North Americas do it all together. But uh, yeah, Europe is, is, is still, still not unified. I have a f I, I hear there are plans to abolish it completely in Europe. But I think all the, all the countries need to agree to that. I've heard other plans that in America they want to amalgamate the four main time zones into two or something like that. I'm not entirely sure if and when that's going to happen. One of those things. Good to see you all. Matthew is here. Yoshi is here. Meg Twin is here. The Camilla is here. Wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for purchasing uh, Windbound recently via my affiliate link. I really appreciate that. Mr. Brian Martina is my mother. Thank you so much for being here. Mr. Chris is here. And um, Treyas is also here. Very good to see you. And Mr. Dragonate, of course. And I think Julia might be popping in. Did you? Me too, actually. I tried survival mode. I tried survival mode, which is... Um, which is a challenge, but I'm only at chapter one. Interesting. I've been trying out when you complete the game, you get given an item that is this kind of a um, kind of a face mask, and that will allow you to to take one hit from an enemy without that doing anything to your health. And then it needs to charge up, and that's kind of cool. So I have to say that's uh, that's nice. But that means I can't wear my 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 dodging hood anymore. So that's that's kind of not so good. Let me show you what's happening on Jay's farm. I think there we go. I think uh, it, there's been a lot of progress that's happened. I've implemented something that I like to call an inventory. So that happens when I press the tab key. Then this comes up, and I can't move the player, which is kind of what we expect. And the cool thing is that I can now go and pick things up and put them in my inventory. So these are cabbages that are just growing automatically. And if I wanted to pick them up, then it'll tell me. Oops. Then it'll usually tell me that I can't quite do that because. Uh, they're not they're not grown yet, but I guess these these have grown, so that's cool. So if I now go and open my inventory, I have cabbages in my inventory. Isn't that cool? That took me quite a while to implement, but it was a lot of fun as well. Here's another cabbage. I think I can pick that up as well. So E to interact. Oh no, that's fake cabbage. He's not he's not actually one of the one of the new cabbages that that is you know that's happening with with that system. So the idea is that in my plant bed, and I'm going to go and change that here, of course. I can go and press C and then plant a cabbage, and it tells me you know cabbage has been planted, which is kind of cool. So if I now go and try to harvest it, it tells me no, you can't pick it up yet, and it doesn't disappear as a result. So you know that's that's the idea. I need to go and wait for these things to grow fully. There's also a mechanism that I need to implement that if they grow into one another, one of them will die because then, you know, they, they just, you, do, you can't plant things too close together. So now I can go and pick them up and we now have six cabbages, which is cool. And because it's all abstracted under the hood, I implemented the same for another fruit or another vegetable, which is, of course, the pumpkin. So pumpkin is now also plantable. I can go and plant pumpkins and cabbages for now. Those are the only things I've implemented. And I can only plant them here in the planter. I can't plant them anywhere else. So if I can try that here, it says you can't plant this thing here. Neither of these things can be planted here. Ideally, I don't want to do it in the plant bed here. I want to do it over here. So I'm going to go and remove all these vegetables that come with the demo level. And I'm going to go and make these things the plant beds, essentially. And then I can plant whatever I like, wherever I like, but just not too close together. That's the idea. And then my next option, there, so right now we don't have cabbages, uh, sorry, we don't have pumpkins. So if I go and harvest them, I go and have two pumpkins now and six cabbages. And if I go and add these cabbages, now I have eight cabbages, as I call it. What? <laughs> so I'm going to go and try this to expand this, that I have seeds here so that I can only plant cabbages when I actually have the seeds or, you know, anything that I want to plant, I need to have seeds for. The pumpkins, I'm thinking when I harvest them, they might give me the pumpkin fruit, but on rare occasions, kind of randomly, they will also give me a pumpkin seed. So that's the plan. And then eventually I'll have some cash here implemented as well that I will be able to go over here or anywhere really. I think I'm gonna wanna make it go over here to this. There's also this butterflies here. Cute, isn't it? 
particle emitter that's coming but that came with a demo level i didn't really i didn't really do anything about that so this is kind of the market area i'm thinking that i can go and sell my plants or my my vegetables for cash i can also then eat the vegetables i might also be able to craft the vegetables into something else like you know with the help of a stove i might be able to turn pumpkin into pumpkin soup and then eat it that sort of thing so here i'll be able to sell my my um my vegetables for cash with with the cash i can then go and buy more seeds and maybe even at one point a ferrari or something that's the plan <laughs> Thank you, Nate. <laughs> it's one of those things. Yes, yeah, so this is just something, Camilla, I'm just working on. I'm just doodling on. Um, and I'll, I'll see if I if I ever get it to a point where I can actually, you know, where it's, it resembles more like more or less a game. So this inventory system, let me just go take you through it. Um, uh, this is based on something that Ryan Laley has described in one of his amazing tutorials that is available for free on his YouTube channel. Wonderful man. He does amazing tutorials about Unreal Engine. He's only been doing this his channel for about four years, but he has, he's now gone full time because he's so successful with it. It's a very inspiring story. I remember uh, when he was, well, I remember him finding him uh, like two years ago or so, and he was already very big then. And it, since then he's announced that he's gone full time because he can make enough money with YouTube as well as Patreon, as well as personal sessions. He's also in the process of releasing his own shooter game on Steam. So wonderful wonderful check him out ryan laley on on youtube i'm going to leave a description a link to the tutorial that i followed in the description of this video so we have a parent item that is the template for everything that that will be growable so i've implemented the growth mechanic in that like i've explained last time uh, so this is just the this is the timeline that makes the item start small on the construction script here it starts kind of small at the tenth of a scale here and then it goes and grows larger over time so this time i'm going to make a variable because it'll be it'll depend on the on the item like the cabbage and the pumpkin they'll grow at different speeds so i'm going to go and adjust that um, that's essentially all that's in here but each of these items have properties like a name and a description and a category and some of these are quite um, interesting so like the the category is something like um uh, like on the child item it'll be something like a seed or it'll be something like uh, like like cash or it'll be something like it's craftable so those are the categories that i can then query on the ui there the cabbage itself this is where i um would like in, on, on in case of the cabbage i'm going to give it that name green cabbage and then a description and then this is the category i can see so it's seeds plants and cash or i can expand that into other categories and then this is a little thumbnail and I can even give it a mesh here somewhere so that I can look at it in 3D if I wanted to do that. Pumpkin is, you know, different, but it's also, they're all both derived from the, from the parent item here. And then I believe the inventory component is something that I didn't know about. So Ryan explained that very well. This is a player component and that'll be added to my player character. And as such, the player then has the inventory, which is kind of cool. So I, I do like that. So um, this is the, these are kind of three um, functions that add things to my inventory the query is the inventory do i actually have what i want to use there and remove something from the from the inventory so i've literally just followed ryan's tutorial there because i don't know how to how to do this from scratch and this component here is then added to my uh, to my player character to my first person um, player character I believe this is where some of the planting magic happens. This is now in my first person character. And these are two functions. So this is what the planting actually does. So um, in the event graph, we just call that plant a cabbage or plant a pumpkin. So I'll go and amalgamate that so that it hooks up with the UI. That's kind of the idea. But then the the planting mechanic, that's a little bit, um, that's a little bit uh, crazy. So this is a line trace, much like the one that I have to pick an item up, the planting item, the, sorry, like much like I have the planting item, the, um, this is the line trace here. And it goes, uh, this is the, the difficult bit that, uh, that takes my first person camera and then goes kind of forward thousand steps or thousand pixels and then, uh, lines it up with the crosshair there. And that's, that's how I end up with a plant in the ground. But I can only do that when uh, when the plant's actually in my inventory eventually. So this is the this is the branch that says if the cast works, and it is actually a plant bed here. Then I go and say um, 
if it, if it works, I can go and go ahead and plant this thing. If it doesn't work, then I'll say it, you can't plant anything here. So that needs to be a UI message that pops up, I'm thinking. And that is kind of how that works. This is just a string uh, concatenation so that I can uh, that I can say this and that is planted. I think there's also a space missing. I might as well just add that in there. So this takes the name from my item that we're planting. And then we're just adding that, making it low uppercase, and then we're adding plant it to the end. So very, very interesting. The inventory, then we have the farm player controller. That is in charge of the UI. The UI is kind of cool. The UI that I've shown you is made of components. So that's something that I found uh, interesting as well. Um, if I go and... I can't quite plant, pick these things up, but if I go and open this up, I can see that these are the category headlines that correspond to the categories in my inventory. And so there's basically, there's three parts of the UI here. There's actually, there's four parts. One is this thing coming up and disappearing again. That is its own UI widget. Then inside that is a widget that then builds itself out of the, uh, out of these blocks here, which if I go and pick these up, I, su I suppose it will be easier to um, to show here. So this is a category and underneath it, what's inside that category. So this is one, this is one UI. This is the same UI again. This, that's the same UI again, kind of cool. And inside that UI, we have this as a UI. And if I had pumpkins as well, then I would have literally that UI another time. And the clever bit is that I don't have to worry so much about building this out um, like statically, it'll happen dynamically. So if I go and add more categories, it'll just amend the UI here. Or if I add more items that I pick up, it'll just go, it's a wrap box basically. So it'll, if I have enough items, it would eventually go and wrap and build a second line kind of automatically. So that's, that's kind of cool. Yes, but Ryan explains this much better than I can. I just wanted to give you a quick status update on Chase Farm. And this is where I've got to already. I'm looking forward to the next part already. <laughs> Mr. Max, how you doing? Yes, I was thinking about that, Yoshi. Absolutely. There is this, um, this little well here. Oops. <laughs> a little bit fast. This little well is in the middle. I don't even know if I'm going to use these assets or not. Um, I just thought, you know, the, the, the whole the underlying mechanic of it was interesting to me. I'm thinking that this could be where the player grabs some water and you have to regularly water the plants so that the plants only grow when there's a certain amount of water. So essentially the plants have health while they're growing and the, the water's ticking away. So that's a mechanic I could add there. And um, the other thing I want to do is I want to replace the sky here. So this, while it's very stylized, there is a day scene and a night scene. I think I might want to go and get rid of the yellowish sky and just replace it with the day, day night life cycle and make it so that the plants only grow when it's actually daylight. So between daylight hours and during the night, they just, you know, they, they sleep. So kind of, you know, thinking about that. But hey, it's one of those things. There's, there's easily too much that you can plan and it's really important to work within your limitations and see if you can, if you can make the, make the super easy things work first and then expand from there. But at the same time, it's also important to think of these things ahead of time so that you don't hard code stuff that is then not expandable. So that's why I think um, Ryan explains this really well in regards to uh, keep an eye on uh, on expandability. And um, yeah, I think that's yeah, it's, it's just an exercise for me. So I'll, I'll see how it goes.